right, joining me now is David Hawkins. He's the editor of The Fulcrum here in D.C., and he breaks down some of the big stories for us each week. And this week, Congress is still in that midsummer recess, that August recess. They're not here till after Labor Day, but there's already been some talk of what they might do when they come back, specifically on guns. Is there actually a chance that the Republican-controlled Senate would take up any meaningful gun legislation? So there is, if you hear Mitch McConnell talk about it. He actually said, uh, I guess it was last week, that when the Senate comes back, Gun legislation would be front and center. Uh, this is obviously uh, in response to the back-to-back -back shootings in El Paso and Dayton. Uh, when he said front and center, he didn't specifically say what. Uh, there are some want to talk about so-called red flag legislation, legislation that would allow uh, people to sort of phone in warnings about people and have their guns taken away. Others are talking about uh, changing, uh, limiting the size of magazine clips. Others are talking about banning assault weapons. Others talking about universal background checks. Lots of different proposals. Mitch McConnell hasn't said which of those he's going to permit, but he has suggested that there'll be some sort of wide open debate, which would be really different for Mitch McConnell's Senate this year. This year has been almost entirely bereft of policymaking. It's been all about confirming judges, confirming administration officials, high term turnover in the administration, v very, very few uh, actual votes on policies. So this could be different. Yeah, and when we talk about the gun legislation debate, McConnell's name is obviously at the center of it. He's a Senate majority leader. But how much power does he have unilaterally? Are there other factors at play? There are. He does have a lot of power because he has the power that his other Republicans give him. That's sort of how you become the majority leader is the other Republicans cede their power to you to set the schedule, set the agenda. But it doesn't make Mitch McConnell a dictator. And this is where I think there's a little bit of a, of a stereotype or a naivete about McConnell's power. McConnell's power is generally that he knows what his colleagues want. And he generally gives it to them. If they want to obstruct and not have to vote on a piece of legislation, McConnell is willing to be the tip of the spear. The bill that we at the Fulcrum paying a lot of attention to this year, the so-called um, campaign finance, ethics, and election overhaul, McConnell has said, no, no, we're not going to touch that. That's because most Republicans don't want to touch it. If he gets the word from his colleagues that they do want to touch something, he will generally do what they want and bring it up. That's how he stayed in power. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of talk last week about Congress coming back in the middle of their break, their recess. Uh, and it, it gets framed as Congress coming back from a vacation. Right. How accurate is that to say that they are out on vacation? It's only partly accurate, to be fair. I mean, it is a five-week break out of Washington. Very few members are spending all five of that uh, of those weeks hiking or sitting on the beach or or going bike riding. Uh, they are, however, spending some time, some of them travel overseas. A lot of them go to the Middle East. They go to Europe. They do fact-finding trips. A lot of them start campaigning. They meet with constituents. They do take a little bit of, of a break, uh, more so than in the past. There are more and more members with young families. This was a result of the Democratic takeover of the, uh, of the House last year. A lot of younger people with families, they want some time with their kids before they go back to school in, in late August. So the notion that they would come back during that family time, I'm very, very unlikely, absent a true defining wartime emergency. Yeah. Well, David, you're looking nice and tan, so I know you won't fault them for spending a little bit of time on the beach. <laughs> Thank you again for joining us. For more stories like these, you can check out The Fulcrum at thefulcrum.us.